Hi there. In this video, we'll talk about formal semantics, the process that we humans use to extract information from sentences. We'll try to use a similar process to extract information from written text, for example. So in the last few videos, we've been looking at information and how to uh, store it. We have, for example, relational databases where you have an entity like person, and then the entity has some attributes like uh, father of, and then the value Jim, name John. So there's a particular instance of the entity person, which is John, and it has uh, is the father of Jim. There's another entity, which is called Jim, and it has the attribute is the father of Dave. That would be a relational database. There's, for example, knowledge graphs, which have entities like John and Jim, which are the type person, and they're linked together by a relationship. So for example, John and Jim are linked by the relationship is the father of. This is more like a knowledge graph. So regardless of how we store our information, we have pieces of information about the universe, that John is the father of Jim, Jim is the father of Dave. This is one of the things that we want to do for sure. We want the computer to know things so that if we ask it, is John the father of Jim? The computer will have some means of answering yes. However, we want the computer to do more than that. Hopefully we want it to be able to answer questions like these. Is John the grandfather of Dave? So that the, uh, nowhere in this graph is uh, is there a relationship that contains this information? Nowhere in the graph does it say that John is the grandfather of Dave. However, you could put together an answer based on the facts that you have in this graph, based that John is the father of Jim and Jim is the father of Dave. Therefore, John is the grandfather of Dave. This process is called inference, and hopefully we want our computer to be able to do this. Humans have to do this all the time. They have to uh, absorb information about the world and then extrapolate answers from what they know, from maybe incomplete information, and they perform inference all the time. In general, we call this process semantics, which is the study of meaning. There's two types of semantics that we're going to focus on this week. Right now, we're going to look at formal semantics. And in a couple of videos, we're going to look at lexical semantics, which is how um, we know the meanings of words. For example, why is where what is the relationship between cold and hot? For example, um, what is the relationship between a sandwich and a hot dog? For example, but let's look at formal semantics for now. Let's say you have a sentence like I have a car. You in your brain, and by the way, not in your brain. All, all of what I'm going to say is a model that we use to try to explain the world, but the psycholinguistic process of how you understand is something that we're not going to be studying in this class. Um, but by all means, read psycholinguistics if you're interested in it, because it's fascinating how these are calculated in the mind. Sorry for the brief interruption. Let's say we have a sentence like, I have a car. We could describe this as the action of having, which is in the verb. So this function is going to take its name from the verb. It's the function having, and it has two um, arguments. There's a haver to the action have, and the haver is the speaker, and there's something that is had, a had thing, which is the car. This could happen to every sentence. For example, maybe the sentence is I eat pizza. The function would be eat, and then the eater would be I, and the thing eaten would be pizza. Not all verbs have two arguments, some have more. For example, the verb give, the function would be called give. One argument would be who does the giving. For example, I, I give you pizza, I do the giving. Um, the thing being given is pizza, and then who does this action uh, benefit. It would be you because you get the pizza. I give you pizza would be a function called give, which has the three arguments. I, pizza, you, for example. 
So humans are probably performing a process like this all the time where they analyze sentences. And if you have a sentence like I have a car, there's the function have, which takes two arguments, I and car. Probably we're doing things that are even more complex and we call this first order logic. We probably are analyzing this sentence like this. There's an event E and a thing Y such that there's an event of having and the, uh, there's a haver for the event E, which is the speaker, I, and there's something that is had in the event E, which is the thing Y, and the thing Y is a car. So the, this sentence would be true if all of these elements are true. And humans must be performing something like this because they can detect different levels of falseness of the sentence. For example, if the sentence said, uh, if the sentence was incorrect because what I have is not a car, but a bike, then this argument would be false because there is an event of having, I have something, I have a thing that is X, but X is not a car, it's a bike, for example. If this is a lie because I'm not the one who has the car, it's genie, then um, this part of the function would be false because the haver of the event E is not I, it's genie, for example. So we must be performing some very sophisticated logical calculations when we get a sentence like this, when we hear it. And we're going to try to emulate this process. We can use our tree parses, uh, for example, a constituency parsing, to extract logical information. So if we have a sentence like, Franco likes Frasca, the event would be one of likes, for example. And we know that the event likes has a liker, that is the subject, Franco, and that the event likes has a direct object, which is the thing liked, which is Frasca. So we could turn our trees into logical representations, similar to the knowledge graphs that we saw before, where, for example, um, Franco and Frasca are two entities, and they are connected by a relationship likes. Franco likes Frasca. If we have enough of these, and enough for Google and IBM are in the billions, we could eventually build a knowledge base where the computer could extrapolate new information from the facts it already knows. And of course, the, the information is going to be incomplete. Maybe it'll be there'll be some relationships that it's missing. Maybe um, some information is going to be unidirectional. For example, it knows that John is the father of Jim, but there's no bit of text that says that Jim is the son of uh, John, for example. So you can have information being complete in all sorts of ways, which is why you need to be able to perform inference. This is an example from our textbook. Let's say you know that there's a restaurant called Leaf that is a vegetarian restaurant, but nowhere in your text does it say that Leaf serves vegetarian food. So if you get the question, does it serve vegetarian food? How do you respond to this? You're going to need to merge the facts you have and try to compute an answer based on the potentially incomplete list of facts that you have. For example, maybe you know that Leaf is a vegetarian restaurant and you know from some other part of the text that every vegetarian restaurant, there, there exists, I'm sorry, for every X, which is a vegetarian restaurant, X serves vegetarian food. So you can replace leaf by X with X, and this is called lambda calculus if you've seen it, and you get as a result that leaf serves vegetarian food. So this process is called inference, where you take facts that you already knew to derive new information. Um, quick question, pause the video and try to figure out what this statement means. Maybe this could be like a search into a search engine. Go ahead and try to put that, try to turn that from logic into English. What does that mean? Pause the video. Welcome back. Um, what would this mean? Probably means something like 
Mex Mexican restaurants near me because there exists an X such as it's a restaurant X serves Mexican food and the location um, of X is the location of it's near the location of me <laughs> or probably my phone. <laughs> So this is the way, for example, that a system could deconstruct a sentence. And then you could have your knowledge base try to figure out if there is an X that allows for this calculation to be true. Maybe the X is margaritas. And if margaritas is a restaurant, if that knowledge is true from your knowledge base and we know that margaritas serves Mexican food, if this exists in your knowledge base. And if the location of margaritas is near the location of my phone, if somehow you derive a process to, cal to calculate that this is true, then this whole expression will be true and you can resolve that X is, equals to, is equal to margaritas. And that's what you would return as the answer of Mexican restaurants near me. Um, in summary, when we are um, trying to handle information and ultimately generate knowledge, we need to perform two operations. We need to extract the information from our text or our language in general, and we need to be able to perform inferences so that we can derive new inf uh, knowledge and that we can answer questions. In general, we call this process semantics, and as you can see, it, it, in general, it will be called formal semantics. We can extract information from parsed sentences and we need to somehow format these as rules that we can perform logical inference on. For example, a knowledge graph would format these as entities and relationships that connect them so that you can ask a question like margaritas serves Mexican food. The exact implementation, there's many of them, but in general, you need a system that connects entities through rules or logical functions so that you can then compute inferences on them.